Sports Update from your number one business radio, Brushroof Radio. Yes, the last edition of Sports Update for the week from your number one business radio, Brushroof Radio. Yes, if you look at your uh, time there, it is already to 10 and it's time for Sports Update. Good morning to all of you once again. Yes, today, Friday, the 20th of um, August 20. 21. This morning on Sports Update, we'll have a lot to talk about in the world of sports, ranging from the world of boxing down to the world of tennis, straight to athletics, and then from there we'll go to the world of football, where yesterday UEFA um, released their shortlist for the men, the women player of the year award, and that of the coaches as well. And then uh, we'll wrap up the show this morning with the transfer market. A lot of transfer, lots of transfer happened yesterday, both um, lows and, you know, completed deals. And then in the rumors, a lot to, uh, you know, just about this morning. So trust me, this morning on the show, we'll have a lot to talk about. But before then, remember, you can join the conversation via all our social media platforms. On Facebook, I'm live there now. Yes, on Facebook, I'm live at Brussels Radio NG. If you are listening to me via uh, the mobile app, I'm live on Facebook at Brussels Radio NG. And if you are listening to me there now on Facebook, remember to like the show. Remember to, you know, um, drop your comments. And I will be reading them out this morning. Remember to share as well. On YouTube, uh, this show will also be uploaded live there after the show. Remember to click the notification button and as well subscribe. And then um, you can also join the conversation via our WhatsApp number. The number is 0097910074. That is our WhatsApp number. In case you want to partner with us, you want to do business with us, yes, you can come to our office, 5860 Broad Street, Lagos Island. That is where our office is located. Or you can drop a mail at hello uh, at broadstreetradio.com. Or maybe uh, call the number 0097910073 or 0034361400. If you are listening to me via Facebook now, you'll see the number displayed on your screen there. Away from that, now let's go straight to the business of the day, and that is talking about sports. This morning, let's start quickly with the world of boxing, where um, Saul Canelo Alvarez uh, will take on Keller Plant on November 6th in Las Vegas with the undisputed Super Middle uh, Weight Championship at stake. Yes, if you remember this, the fight already before now has been targeted for September, but then fell apart. But after Canelo considered World Light Heavyweight Champion uh, Dimitri Bivol as his ne next opponent, he has now finalized a deal with Plant. Like I said before, so Canel Alvarez will be taking on Caleb Plant on November 6th there in Las Vegas with the undisputed Super Middleweight um, Championship at stake. Away from the world of boxing now, let's go straight to the world of tennis where British duo Andy Murray and Dan Evans has been handed white card for the Western Slam Open. Yes, the final tournament before the start of the US Open. Yes, with regards to that, Andy Murray, remember, will be making his second appearance at the Western Slam Open after, you know, accepting that white card invitation to the event. While uh, uh, British number one, Dan Evans, will also uh, be part of that. I think it will be a tournament, you know, that will serve as a warm-up for the U.S. Open, which begins later on September 30th there. Um, or, or August, sorry, August 30th there in New York. Yes, the U.S. Open, uh, August 30th in New York. Okay, that is much I want to talk about this morning in the world of tennis. Away from that, let's go straight to the world of athletics. Yes, uh, it was a bad one for Team Nigeria at the ongoing um, World Athletics Under-20 Championship that is uh, happening already in Nairobi yesterday. Remember, um, a day before, it was a good one for us. You know, we've been able to get some medals. But yesterday, it was a bad one for us as Team Nigeria lost two medals in the sprint event. Yes, it all this disappointment all started in the women's 100 meters race. We are praised Ufoku ran a rather slow race to finish fourth in the race that was actually won by Jamaica's team Clayton in around 11.09 seconds. Yes, the Nigerian actually uh, ran 11.53 seconds, uh, you know, making it a very bad one for her, you know, finishing fourth in that. Remember, the Jamaican team Clayton coming first in around 11.09 seconds. Why? In the uh, second position, we have Namibian Beatis uh, means Ligi. Uh, who came second in around 11.39 seconds, while Melissa uh, was stalled in 11.51 seconds. 
I think um, for Ufuku, it was a bad one for her yesterday, but then um, that is the game of sports for you. Sometimes, you know, you win and sometimes you lose as well. But after um, that disappointing um, opening, uh, all attention was shifted, you know, to the men's sprint event. But then uh, one of Nigeria's best um, men junior sprinters, Gotsim Brume, could not live up to expectation as he finished last in a time of 10. 0.74 seconds. Yes, the race was actually won by Botswana's lately Tebogo in around 10.19 seconds. Just as South Africa and Cuba were second and third respectively. But then I think it was also a, uh, a happy one for Nigeria. So, uh, some were between that yesterday in the event. Remember, two Nigerian athletes could not travel with the team on Sunday over COVID-19 protocols, but um, happily for us yesterday, they arrived in, um, in Nairobi in the early hours of yesterday. But then, um, the arrival, you know, sparked um, a lot of jubilation in the um, camp. You know, the expectation was high. They were expecting um, these young athletes, you know, to join the team, and finally, they were able to join. Yes, they... Um, the likes of Esther Osiseke and then um, Sarah Uchibo, or um, you know, uh, two or both of them arriving in the camp um, yesterday. Talking about their event, Uchibo's event actually, um, you know, took place some hours after she arrived. Why ran for you know, forced the organizers to shift them um, Osiseke's um, um, discourse through to today. So, do, um, that event will be happening um, later today. All right, um, that is much I want to talk about the ongoing under 20 World Athletics Championship that is happening in Nairobi, Kenya. Let's f um, focus attention now to the uh, the Tigers of Nigeria. Yes, the Nigerian men basketball team. Yes, yesterday the head coach of the Tigers, Mark Brown, uh, yesterday released his final 12 man list for the 2021 FIBA Afro Basket uh, Ball, which begins in Kigali, Rwanda, um, next week. Um, Afolabi Oni, the media officer of the Nigerian Basketball Federation, in a statement yesterday explained that the list does not have Nigerians playing in the National Basketball Association, NBA. He said that this was because NBA league rules do not permit players to participate in a competition um, 60 days before the league's resumption. And because of that, most um, uh, players from the Nigerian Basketball Association uh, could not join, considering the fact that the NBA uh, league will, uh, will be starting soon, which is less than 60 days before the uh, uh, league resumption, yes. And that is why most of them are not on that list to participate in the 2021 FIBA Afro Basketball that will be happening in Kigali, Rwanda by next week. In the list of players uh, that uh, met that list, I think um, the list... Um, is a very strong one for me, a very strong one. The list has the likes of Emmanuel Omogo of Apo BC of Cyprus, and um, Benjamin Emogolu of Rome Basket um, Metropole there in France, as well as TK Edogi, who is making a return to the team after missing out on the 2020 Olympics there in Tokyo. Also, part of the list will have Steven Domingo, who, um, uh, who plays for Lek Lekland Magic. They're in, uh, they're in the G League in USA. Why Jordan Ogoni Duran and then um, Jeremiah Modi are also part of the team. In that team, also, we have the likes of um, Rivers Hoppers point guard Ikech Ku Benjamin and then Kuku uh, Victor Anthony. I think these are some of the names on that list. And then the duo of one for Celestine Joseph. Um, who um, happen, who plays for Canopillas and then Agu Ibe Aguchi of Gumbe Bulls are also on the list of invited players from the Nigerian uh, League. I think um, uh, all expectation is there. I think expectation is very much high now as it stands. Uh, but then a quick one, the team as it stands now will be, they are expected to arrive in Kigali on Sunday ahead of their first game against Mali on Wednesday next week. I think we wish them all the best. Let's see what happens. You know, it was a sad one for them in the, in the just concluded 2020 Tokyo um, Olympics. But then coming back to the FIBA competition, uh, let's see if they can make a turnaround um, this time. Away from basketball now, let's shift our attention to the world of football. I think it has been a busy one in the world of football, uh, especially with what happened last night. Uh, FIFA, um, UEFA, sorry, dropping their list for the, uh, you know, players of the year, the, both the men and women and the coaches of the year. Yes, European Football Governing Board, UEFA, 
just li just listing a lot of names yesterday but the top three is our focus this morning uh, in the top three we have Ngulu Kante and Jorginho who all play for uh, Chelsea there in London why Manchester City star Kevin De Bruyne uh, who play a uh, who also plays in England is also part of the top three that we are mentioned in that list. Let's just take a look at their profile. First, um, Kevin De Bruyne, runner-up for this award. Remember, um, the last one, he was a runner-up, yes. The Belgian picking up where he left off has inspired City to the Premier League title and through to the Champions League final where he suffered a facial injury for, and later forced him off that uh, match. Yes, winning the champion, winning the pre English Premier League and then coming up as runners-up to uh, Chelsea, who actually won the Champions League last season. And then, talking about Jorginho, remember, um, as it stands now, Jorginho is becoming the only 10th player to win a European Cup and a Euro in the same year, starting every Euro 2020 game for Italy, having missed just one in the Blues' run to the Champions League glory. Look at it this way. Winning the Champions League, winning the Europa, uh, Euro 2020, and also winning the UEFA Super Cup. And then on third uh, on the list is N'Golo Kante. Yes, finishing the Champions League season like a trend. Yes, I think so many persons are rooting for N'Golo Kante to win that um, award this time around. Remember, he, were, he was able, in the last concluded Champions League, he was able to get a lot of Man of the Match award. And then, despite the fact that his team, the French team, crashed out in the uh, just concluded Euro 2020 uh, competition. But I think he's also a good contender in that. N'Golo Kante... Uh, Jorginho and then Kevin De Bruyne of Manchester City. Who do you think is going to win that award this time around? But away from the top three, other names that we are, you know, it is surprising that um, Lionel Messi and um, Cristiano Ronaldo are not in that top three. But in the um, um, looking at the top ten, uh, after the top three, Lionel Messi is sitting fourth. Lionel Messi of Paris Saint Germain uh, with 148 points. Ro uh, Robert Lewandowski. Uh, on the fifth spot, and Donnarumma of him, who now he was playing for AC Milan actually, but now for Paris Saint Germain, and uh, also an Italian player as well. He's sixth on this uh, the table there. Kylian Mbappe seventh, Raheem Sterling eighth, Cristiano Ronaldo nine, and Elin Brut Haaland tenth on the position. So I think all eyes are now on the top three. That talking about um, Kevin De Bruyne, Jorginho, and um, Ngolo Kante. Who gets the award this time around? Remember, the award is coming up by next week, um, next week Thursday. Yes, next week Thursday, when the draw for the Champions League um, uh, group stages will be made. I think that is when we will actually know who is going to become the UEFA's Player of the Year uh, that just um, ended. And then in the list too, uh, I think a lot of them. Um, them too talking about um, the women player of the year and the coaches okay look, let us look at the women players that we are nominated but i'll just take the first three jennifer hermoso of barcelona and um, like martins of still barcelona alexam putles of um, barcelona as well remember barcelona we had um, just won the uefa women's champions league that uh, they defeated the chelsea side um last season so i'm not surprised you know having three of their players in the top three okay going to the coaches this time around let's talk about the men uh, pep Guardiola of manchester city roberto massini of italy and then thomas Tuchel of chelsea talking about the women um, coaches the top three that were nominated Luis cote of barcelona and um, peter genderson of sweden emma Hess of chelsea these are the top three we'll see on that list when it comes to the women coach of the year i think it will it will be a very tough one a very tough one to uh, I, i'm sure by august 26 we'll get to know who wins the award uh, so many expectations I, I think i've seen a couple of reactions from people on social media uh, there has been a lot of debate i followed up to you know see what people are saying but i think um around 60 or 70 percent of what i saw uh, on social media we are all rooting for judging who is it possible that this time around maybe finally a chase player will get hold of that award anything is possible kevin de Bruyne is also a strong contender to that award ngulu kante is also a strong contender to that award he's open and talking about the coaches is also open and then uh, let's just see i think by next week we'll get to know at least by that time we'll get to know who wins and then the champions league draw that will be held that same day all right, away from that now to wrap up the show this morning, let's go to the transfer market and see what is happening. Like I said earlier on, 
in the show. A lot of transfer did, did happen um, yesterday. Um, let's start with Arsenal. Arsenal are very much in the transfer market. They are very much active this time around. Um, I, I think, um, for me, he is a good one to get Martin Odegaard, yes. Martin Odegaard, remember, he spent last season on loan at the Emirates Stadium. But this time around, Arsenal been able to get him on a permanent deal. Martin Odegaard moving from Real Madrid to Arsenal for around £34 million pounds deal. Uh, that is one of the top uh, transfers that happened yesterday. And then Wendell moving from Bayern Leverkusen to Porto for around £4.3 million pounds deal. And then Emerson Palmeira of Chelsea moving to Lyon on a loan season um, long loan. And one of the surprising transfers that happened yesterday is that of um, Pedro, who made a, a, a switch from Roma to Lazio. I think uh, so many persons are saying it's a controversial one, but for me, that is football for you. So Pedro moving from Roma to Lazio as a free transfer. And then uh, one of the transfers too that happened yesterday or not, Dan Juma moving from Bonomat to Villarreal for around £20 million. Pounds, while Oxen Tufan moving from Fenerbahce to Watford on loan. And then uh, I think that these are some of the biggest transfers that happened yesterday. I mentioned that of Kennedy moving from Chelsea to Flamingo on loan, and then Manuel um, Lucatelli moving from Sassuolo to Juventus on loan as well. Um, these are some of the I think uh, these two I mentioned them yesterday, but the previous ones, um, these are some of the transfer, transfers that happened yesterday. But talking about the transfer rumors, let's see what is happening there. A lot of rumors are up this morning, and, and I think one of the surprising names I saw this morning is that of L Jesse Lingard. Yes, England may feel that Jesse Lingard, as it stands now, is ready to leave Manchester United before the transfer window closes, unless he believes he's going to play regularly for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's team this season. Going to the Reds, Liverpool are preparing a new contract offer for Egypt forward Mohamed Salah, which would be the most expensive in the club's history. Elsewhere, Sheffield United are also interested in signing Manchester United and Ivory Coast winger Ahmad Diole on loan. While Poland striker Robert Lewandowski is ready to seek a new challenge away from Bayern Munich. As it stands now, the 32-year-old, remember, has, still has um, two years left to run on his contract with the Bundesliga champions. Uh, uh, talking about his price tag, Lewandowski's price tag is around £100 million, uh, which may you know, deter Manchester City in making an offer. So many uh, Chelsea some time ago before they were able to get the signature of um, um, Lukaku. I think some time ago there was this rumor that they were also going for him, but at the end of the day they went for Romelu Lukaku. And this time around, Robert Lewandowski is on the news this time around. His price tag is a very um, surprising 100 million pounds and um, price tag. Uh, well, let's see uh, if maybe he continues to. Uh, remain at the Alliance Arena or at the end of the day make a move away from the Alliance Arena. Manchester City, Portugal, um, Mishida and um, Bruno, F um, Bernardo, sorry, Bernardo Silva does not want to move to Tottenham as part of a deal to sign England striker Harry Kane. While um, Paris Saint-Germain manager Mauricio Pochettino says he expects French um, forward Kylian Mbappe to stay at the club this season despite speculations um, linking him with a move. Uh, to Real Madrid. Why Chelsea assistants now have um, reportedly held fresh talks with Monaco midfielder Aurelien um, Tuakneme. Tuak sorry. Um, yes, as the 21 year old French man has also been linked to Manchester United over the summer. Why Chelsea are set to offer 22 year old English defender Trevor Chaloba a new deal after his impressive start to the season. Why Peril Emrick? Aboumian is happy to stay at Arsenal beyond uh, the summer. Remember, there has been a, a lot of criticism with regards to the Gabon striker. There has been also links um, uh, with him moving to the Barcelona side. I think all these are rumors. That is why we call them transfer rumors. They are gossip we can talk about, which at the end of the day might come to reality or not. Elsewhere, Tottenham, Leicester City and Wolves are also interested in signing PSV 19-year-old um, English winger Noni Madweke. Why Manchester United squad has also spotted in Portugal and um, watching PSV's um, Champions League qualifying playoff defeat by Benfica at Estadio de Luz. Uh, Manchester United's uh, scoffing Noni Madweke. Well, uh, let's see if that will materialize. And finally, uh, let's wrap it up this morning with Barcelona and Everton. Barcelona wants around £12.8 million for 18-year-old Spanish midfielder Alex Moriba. As a teenager has attracted interest from Wolves, 
but the Catalan club are yet to receive an acceptable offer. Why Everton have approached them Barcelona with an inquiry about um, centre back somewhere in Titi with a view of signing the French international before the transfer deadline ends on 31st of August 2021. I think that is much. I want to talk about the rumors that are up for discussion this morning. And that is why I'm wrapping it up on Sports Update this morning, coming to you from your number one business radio, Grassroots Radio. Yeah, I'll be back next week uh, for another interesting edition of Sports Update. Remember, on Saturday, we still have Sports Extra to talk. Uh, but that is the end of um, Sports Update for the week. By Monday, I'll be back for another interesting edition. But remember to follow us on all social media platforms on Facebook and YouTube. We are there at Bros. Radio NG. Remember to like our shows. Remember to comment. Remember to share as well. Remember on, on YouTube to cl click the notification button and as well to subscribe. Yes, you can partner with us. You can do business with us. We are open for sponsorship. The number to call is 0 or 0 0 or you can send a mail to hello at brusradio.com or maybe come to our office 5860 Brusprit Lagos Island that is the location of our office Medifi House is the name of the building fifth floor to be precise after this time how market is up next yes morning beverage will continue as Temu Sinachi myself will be back for how market and today we'll be discussing one interesting topic and that is franchise business in Nigeria and I'm sure our guest is in the studio ready um, to have this important discussion with us so don't go anywhere but before then enjoy the music and the Friday music vibes that will be dropping for you